Tampa starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is February 21st. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. One of the good things I think about social media is it allows people to get important messages out to the masses. And when something goes viral, it goes viral for a reason. And the latest one, there's a really good reason. And there is a, a re really good reason. Uh, GoFundMe is now getting behind in a big way a bullied Australian boy that this story has gone viral and raising big money and good is going to come of this. This is a video that his mom posted. This is a video that's literally the mom posted and has gone viral. It's been shared all over the world, not just in Australia, obviously, in America, in, in every country. And people are jumping on board and coming to this child's defense because he wanted, he said he just wanted to die because he'd been bullied at school. So thousands of donors have now chipped in to go fund me that we're going to be showing you here, uh, supporting the vacation for Qu Quaden Bales, nine bored with dwarfism, the outpouring support inspired by the heart wrenching video of his mom that posted earlier this week of him crying in the family car after another kid at school mocked him for his height. He said, I wish I could stab myself in the heart. If you watch this and do not cry, I, I don't know how you could possibly do it. I, I bawled. But anyway, the organizer is Brad Williams, and he launched the fundraiser, and he said there he wants to show him that there is good in the world. He said, I'm setting up a GoFundMe to let Quaden know that bullying will not be tolerated and that he is a wonderful human being who deserves joy. He said, I want to fly Quaden and his mom to America, get them a nice hotel, and bring them to Disneyland, and we have an update on that GoFundMe account. You, drumroll please, have a new total. Over $200,000. I think it's up to like $221,000 now donated online for a little quid. And this is to get him and his mom to America, a nice hotel room, and bring them to Disney World or Disneyland, either one they want to do, and have him spoiled rotten. But other people have gotten on board, too. The Australian Professional Rugby League invited Quaden to lead their All-Stars team out onto the field for an upcoming match and said, we want to wish you all the best, brother. One of the team's players said, we know you're going through a hard time, but the boys are here, and we've got your back. We support you. Just the beginning. Yes. Love it. Let's take a look at your rundown. The Kremlin is focused on the White House. One official said that they, their intelligence is that Russia is interfering or attempting to interfere in the 2020 election with the goal of re-electing President Trump. More than two dozen Americans who evacuated a cruise ship in Japan are now being treated at hospitals here in the U.S. because of the coronavirus. A plane evacuating Americans and other passengers from a different cruise ship was denied permission to land in Turkey overnight. The family is safe after fire started at the back of their home overnight. It happened just after two o'clock this morning. This was in the 700 block of San Bernardo. They were able to knock the fire out quickly. The family was able to escape. The mother of two missing children from Idaho is under arrest, charged with trying to stop police from finding them. Lori Vallow is being held on $5 million bail in Hawaii. She's expected to appear in court today. A tanker carrying 4,000 gallons of jet fuel crashed on on this highway in Indianapolis. The fire spread across 500 feet. The driver was trapped by the flames until the first of three bystanders jumped into action to save him. Quote, the most historical item President Trump will ever sign is up for sale at an auction house. We are talking about a copy of the House Judiciary Committee's impeachment report signed by the president. Now you can experience the scent of melted cheese, grilled hamburger, baked bread with just the light of a match because McDonald's put it in a candle. It's been 10 days since the Spurs played a game because of the All-Star break, but they are back in action tonight. Spurs practice in Salt Lake City for tonight's game with the Utah Jazz. NFL team owners have agreed to a new labor agreement. Among the terms is a proposal to move the Super Bowl later in February to President's Day weekend, which would give most fans a day off after the big game. Some, like this woman, are enjoying a mimosa while filling up their cart at the grocery store. Uh, stores like Whole Foods and Nordstrom have joined the trend serving wine and beer so shoppers stay longer and spend more. <laughs> It's brilliant because people will spend a lot more money. Yes, they will. And you don't get a Super Bowl Saturday, but how about a compromise and you get President's Day off after a potential Super Bowl delay, moving it to later in the month? Actually, that would work because that's yeah. a holiday for us here. Yeah, that works. I mean, not everybody, but I mean, it helps, doesn't it? A lot of people do. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't, they, you know, that's, that would be fine. And the other thing, though, back to shopping and drinking and all that, you have to Uber to your store. Don't forget. 
Oh, yeah. No it driving. Requires some <laughs> pre you, you planning. You plan that thing out. Let's take a look outside with the live can. Super meteorologist Katie Blake. Good hey there. morning. What a nice change we have today. Oh, sunshine. Oh, so nice. So nice to see the bright sunshine this morning. We have started off on a cold note, though. A lot of us in the 30s, some spots near freezing this morning, especially up in the hill country. We'll see mostly sunny skies throughout your Friday. Temperatures, though, only climbing into the mid to upper 50s this afternoon. So while it will be nice to have the sun back, winds will relax this afternoon. It is going to stay pretty cool all day today. I have the latest pollen count for you. We've got four allergens, mold, ash, juniper and elm. Thankfully, everything is nice and low on this Friday. We'll talk more about what the weekend has in store and when our next cold front arrives coming up in the full forecast. That'll be up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. 35 at Topper Wine. Heavy traffic right now on those inbound lanes to be expected there at that uh, near that particular part of town on the northeast side. Well, let's just into our newsroom. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the 10 year old girl killed yesterday while riding her bike to school as Irie Suarez. We first brought you this devastating story as breaking news yesterday on GMSA at 9. Bear County deputies say around 7.30 yesterday morning, Suarez fell off her bike and was hit by an oncoming SUV in far west Bear County. The driver who hit her is not expected to face any charges. Top stories that we're following for you today. This morning, we're getting our first look at the Cibola police officer arrested on child pornography charges. The officer has been identified as Chris Ibarra. His mugshot coming into our newsroom this morning. Here it is. He was arrested just before five yesterday evening and booked into the Guadalupe County Jail. Ibarra was also placed on leave while officials investigate. The Texas Rangers and the Attorney General's Office are leading the investigation. Memorial service is in a viewing today being held for fallen U.S. Army Sergeant who was killed in action in Afghanistan. U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Javier J. Gutierrez was one of two people killed earlier this month when someone in an Afghan uniform opened fire with a machine gun. A viewing for Sergeant Gutierrez will be held today at noon at Community Bible Church. A memorial service will follow at 1 and we will be live streaming it on ksat.com. Graveside services with full military honors will be held tomorrow morning at 10 at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. 12 people are without a home this morning after a two alarm fire damaged the Northside apartment complex. Firefighters responded to the Parliament Ben Apartments, the 11,800 block of Parliament off Blanco Road. Investigators say the fire started on a balcony and like the results of a cigarette. Fire officials say they were able to fight the fire aggressively and put it out quickly. Four units were damaged from the flames, but no one was hurt. The American Red Cross has been put on standby to help the families affected. Since the establishment of Miss Rodeo Texas almost five decades ago, the crowned queen helps keep Western heritage and the Western industry alive in today's society. Miss Rodeo Texas travels all across the state to encourage youth in agriculture. And for the last two weeks, she's been working hard right here in San Antonio. Alicia Barretta visited the fair, fairgrounds to chat with this year's Miss Rodeo Texas to find out what it means to wear that sash. Hey, what's up, Hi. girl? How you doing? Just hanging out in my favorite place. In the pageant world, most girls train and work hard for a session title from a very young age. But for 20-year-old Bernie native Jordan Maldonado, the road to Miss Rodeo Texas started just two years ago. The first pageant, I was first runner-up Miss Rodeo Texas team the year before. And in the November before, I was crowned Miss Rodeo Sandhills. Along with the numerous requirements, Jordan believes it's her extensive knowledge of the rodeo and horsemanship that helped her win the title. The horses we get thrown on, as I've seen these past two weeks, they're pretty difficult. You get thrown on something new every night, and there's no telling what they're going to do. They're pretty unpredictable. Jordan started coming to the San Antonio Rodeo since she was about five years old and grew up judging livestock and horses and showing goats and steers that benefited her education. I got one my senior year um, with my breed champion steer. They gave me a $10,000 scholarship. Her favorite place by far is the cattle barn. The cattle are just a species that I'm so amazed by. Everything about them. Them. Macy Buck shares that same fascination. So third place? Yes. Her steer placed third, winning her a ribbon and the coveted San Antonio Rodeo branding. One day, she hopes to compete for the same pageant title. It's pretty cool. It makes you feel a, like really nice connection with a whole bunch of other people. So it's nice. Jordan says each interaction, especially with young participants, is going to bring him on the victory lap. And each lap around the arena as Miss Rodeo, 
is a surreal experience. It's not something that's totally new for me, but getting to be in the AT&T Center and see all the people up in the stands and the bright lights and the loud music, it's just such a great feeling to be in the arena. A great feeling to be in the arena and all throughout the rodeo grounds for Miss Rodeo Texas. And she's wrapping things up, as is the rodeo here in San Antonio. But up next for her, she's heading to Houston for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And then in mid-March, headed again to Austin for Rodeo Austin. But although things here at the San Antonio Rodeo are wrapping up, another thing that you can check out is Ag Mechanics. Right now, I'm on a restored tractor, 1962 Oliver 1800. And it's best used for plowing and pulling equipment around the farm but hey I am no expert I brought the expert here Matthew Makachek thank you <laughs> good morning so tell us about your tractor how long did it take you to restore this, this? took me nine months to actually restore fully um, it's like a baby basically yeah uh, what was easy about it if anything none of it none of it none we of see it. that picture there it was in pretty rough condition absolutely why is it so important for youth to be involved in um, ag mechanics and you know things like restoring tractors so it's a skill that you can take further on to your life so people like to make a living off of doing this um, so like building a project is actually something that's very important to life because not only can we create something new that's something uh, new and purposeful for later long in agriculture related activities and whatnot and SAEs and whatnot we also have tractor uh, restoration which can actually further career into actually car mechanics whatnot build those skills yeah and then go to uh, trade schools which is something important right now it's a pretty hot thing going on right now and then you can be a national champion or san antonio champion just like matthew matthew thank you so much for being with us this no morning problem. and it's so important too to be at these events and um, encourage the youth because it also helps keep that western tradition and culture alive live from the rodeo alicia barrera case at 12 news also you guys later on this morning gmsa at 9 30 i will be with Dave David Sears. I think we're going to be fishing, and I believe Miss Rodeo is going to join us to go fishing. Back to oh, you. Oh, gone fishing, huh? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Alicia. It's a good looking tractor from 1962. Sure is. That's a lot of work. 910, 41 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. When it comes to dealing with an emergency, every city has a plan in place. That includes things like infectious diseases. Why a local councilman says San Antonio being chosen as a quarantine site for the coronavirus made perfect sense. SeaWorld is opening a brand new ride this spring, and today our very own R.J. Marquez is getting a sneak peek. We'll check in with him live after the break. And the stock market, ooh, it's down. Boy, it's down almost 300 points at 28,948. This is about 914. It's the tallest, fastest, longest wooden roller coaster in Texas. The new Texas Stingray is opening at SeaWorld in San Antonio next week. This morning, R.J. Marquez is getting a preview of the ride. Are you nervous to ride it? <laughs> Am I nervous to ride it? Um, yeah, I'm always kind of nervous to ride these things. I'm kind of a glutton for punishment when it comes to uh, when it comes to getting to ride all the fun attractions here at SeaWorld. But this one looks really cool. And uh, as you guys mentioned, uh, this is going to be a new attraction opening up here at SeaWorld San Antonio. So I'm really excited. And as you said, a little bit nervous about it. But uh, and we're going to get that opportunity here in a little bit. Uh, but also want to talk about some of the conservation efforts that come along with anything that SeaWorld San Antonio does. And of course, we're going to be talking stingrays here. Joining me now is Chuck Carew. He's with SeaWorld San Antonio. And Chuck, uh, again, we always talk about the educational efforts, the conservation efforts that come along with any attraction that you guys open. So let's talk about the stingrays right here and this uh, wooden roller coaster. Yeah, well, of course, Texas Stingray opening up soon. The tallest, fastest, um, longest wooden roller coaster in Texas. But we want to tie that into our mission, and that is to inspire people to... Uh, to respect and conserve animals and the wildlife. Uh, and, and we've got some right here. Check it out. Just like its namesake, we have some stingrays right here. My good friend, one of the supervisors in our aquarium department, this is Janelle Baca. She's the expert on these guys right here. Janelle, tell them what we have here. Good morning. So we've got yellow stingrays uh, here today. Just a little sampling of our collection that we have here. You can see several different types of stingrays in our park, not only in SeaWorld at Explorers Reef, but also inside Aquatica as well. 
Yeah, so uh, this is kind of cool because they're out here kind of braving the chilly weather with us, but they're uh, tropical stingrays, right? Is that the case? Correct. So these particular types of rays you can find in the Gulf of Mexico, around the Florida Keys and into the Atlantic. Um, so they're used to some chilly environments every now and then, but of course we do have heaters and space heaters trying to keep everybody warm this morning. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see these guys here. Okay, Janelle, thank you very much. And uh, Chuck, also thank you for being with us. And again, guys, we're going to go ahead and ride this thing here in a little bit and kind of show you sort of that uh, point of view, the rider point of view, and also get to uh, test this thing out, the uh, Texas Stingray, as it gets set to open here at SeaWorld San Antonio. Back to you guys. Lucky you. Oh, Can't yeah. wait to see it. Thanks. We're excited for it. I know you're a little nervous, RJ, but you're going to be fine, buddy. We got this. <laughs> Go, RJ. Go, RJ. <laughs> we'll talk oh, to him a little bit later so on. So nice to see all that sunshine. I know. I, everyone can appreciate a good space heater, right? Humans and... And stingrays. And stingrays, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little cold outside this morning, uh, but we've got a nice weekend taking shape, especially the first half of the weekend. So my pick, better day this weekend, is going to be Saturday. All right. Because we'll still see plenty of sunshine, get a little bit warmer tomorrow. By Sunday, still on the warmer side, but it's going to be a lot more humid, and we'll see the return of the cloud cover for the back half of the weekend. We've still got temperatures mid to upper 30s up in the Hill Country, 36 at Bernie Stage, uh, 36 up in Kerrville as well, 41 at the airport here in San Antonio, 41 up by 35 in New Braunfels. A low temperatures this morning bottomed out in the 40s, generally where we held on to a bit more cloud cover that was off to the south and west of San Antonio. Everyone that saw skies clear out overnight, you fell into the 30s. So definitely a cold start to the day today and a little bit breezy. That wind may have gotten you this morning. We have sustained winds out of the north northeast still around 10 to 15 miles per hour. But the trend that you'll notice through the rest of the day is that winds are going to gradually relax. So even by lunchtime, sustained wind speeds will be down to 5 to 10 miles per hour. And by this evening, winds will become light just about 2 to 5 miles per hour. So that wind not going to make it feel quite so chilly out there later today. High temperatures, though, will only top out in the mid to upper 50s, right around 55 degrees here in San Antonio. If you've got evening plans, uh, make sure you keep your jacket or sweater handy because temperatures will fall back into the 40s, low to mid 40s pretty quickly after sunset this evening. But as I mentioned, winds will be on the lighter side, so not quite as chilly out there this evening. Across the state of Texas, things will be pretty nice today. The whole state was under a lot of cloud cover the last couple of days, but things will improve today. As we head into the day tomorrow, let's say you're heading out of town to visit friends or family. Uh, some additional cloud cover streaming in, especially up in the panhandle there. Uh, we'll be in the uh, 40s, upper 30s tomorrow morning, a bit colder off to the north into tomorrow afternoon. Another very pleasant day for us. Some high thin clouds out there and high temperatures climbing in into the 60s, but some additional cloud cover, maybe also a little bit of precip will be working into the western portion of the state by very late Saturday into early Sunday. That's also when we'll see things start to change again for us here in South Texas. So the rain will hold off uh, our slim chance of rain will hold off until late Sunday night, but by Sunday morning, we're back under cloudy skies, so that's why I think Saturday may be the best day this weekend if you have plans outside because by Sunday things will turn cloudy again and you're also going to notice a big uptick in humidity by Sunday that could result in some patchy fog, especially in the morning Sunday into the afternoon. Maybe a few peaks of sun here or there, but I'm going to keep us mainly gray through Sunday afternoon with high temperatures mid to upper 60s and then our next front starts to work into the hill country late Sunday night through the pre dawn hours of Monday morning. You're going to notice just a 20% chance of a shower overnight Sunday into Monday as this frontal boundary is arriving. We don't have a whole lot to work with here, so widespread rain is not expected, but this front will come through Monday morning. Uh, we'll see things clear out pretty nicely, maybe a few high clouds, uh, hanging around through Monday, uh, but things will be turning breezy. Look though, even behind that front, we'll see temperatures a little bit warmer in the low 70s. Well, this first front will really just help us out with bringing in some drier air. It's that second front you see on the planning forecast Tuesday morning that will turn things a bit colder once again. We'll talk more about the drop in temperatures coming up next week. Uh, next half hour here on GMSA at night. Looks like I can finally wash my car. Yes, please do that because I need it. to badly. Me too. Me too. Thanks, Katie. Thank You're you, Katie. 920, 41 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is coming to an end this weekend. David Sears is there live checking out some of the fun to be had at the fishing pond. Welcome back, 923. This weekend is your last chance to check out the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. For the past two weeks here on GMSA at 9, we've been showing you some of the fun things you can do at our rodeo. Today, David Sears closing it all out. 
with a look at the rodeos fishing pond. All right, uh -oh. now you have my attention, David. I, I, I don't know. Well, uh oh. You're on. Hello. We are by the fishing hole. <laughs> There's no better way to end excitement at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo than fishing. Just kind of relax. Today, look, we got our pole, we got a bait on it, we got fish in the pond. We're ready to go. This is Cody Roberson. He's, uh, he's the guy in charge of the fishing pond. He's with Army Bass Anglers. First off, about fishing tracks so many. Just getting in the outdoors and uh, enjoying Mother Nature and everything she's created for us and having a good time. Uh, it's a great way to spend time with your kids and family. So you're now living in San Antonio, been here for 14 years. Cody was stationed over at Fort Sam. He retired as an Army Lieutenant Colonel, so thank you for your service. First off, why, did, why stay in San Antonio? Why do this here in this, in this community? Well, believe it or not, Texas has some of the finest fishing lakes in the United States, and San Antonio just happens to be within a couple of hours of three of the top fishing lakes in the top 10 in Texas and I love San Antonio. We know there's some serious fishing competition. We know there's some bass anglers that really go after big time money, but then there's just the people who like to go out and relax. When you get with your family and friends, what's the what's the message you try to tell these people as far as taking your family out and, and, and the kids out fishing? Well, it's all about experiences now, building memories with your kids, getting out in the outdoors, get away from those phones and computers and text messaging and all that kind of stuff. And just build memories, have a good time, catch a fish, be in the sunshine and enjoy the outdoors. All right, Cody, thank you very much for your service and thank you for bringing the pond in with some fishing. We got our, we got our fishing boat. Look, look, look who's joining us here in a minute. That's Miss Rodeo, Texas. She's had a long couple of weeks. She's ready to relax and just do some fishing. That's what we're gonna do coming up the next half hour. I know, Mark, you're, you're disappointed that you're not here because you love fishing, but that's all right. Maybe we'll catch something for you and bring it back. All right. He does love fishing. See you guys fishing. in a little bit. Keep those bobbers busy. On. Thank you, David Sears. More head on TMSA at 9 on your Friday morning. The rodeo isn't the only thing happening this weekend in the Alamo City. Eric Hernandez has a look at some other fun events in your weekend wrap. How prepared is San Antonio when it comes to dealing with major emergencies? We're sort of finding out right now, aren't we? City Councilman Manny Pelaya says we are well prepared. Why he says SA being chosen for coronavirus quarantine actually makes sense. Checking the roads as we head to break. We've got an 18 wheeler that's disabled on I-35 near Splash Town. Uh, seems to be pulled off to the at the side of the road though. Doesn't seem to be causing a problem. Looks like the northbound lanes to me, Leslie. Okay. Welcome back, just about 9.30. Whether it's a hurricane, a mass shooting, or infectious disease like the coronavirus, every city has a plan in place for dealing with emergencies. So how prepared is the Alamo City for these kinds of things? Max Massey spoke to City Councilman Manny Pelias to get some answers. What if coronavirus gets out? We're ready for that. While other local leaders and neighbors of San Antonio are frustrated and confused as to why evacuees from overseas are quarantined here in San Antonio, Councilman Manny Playa says it makes perfect sense. So the coronavirus phenomenon that's happening in San Antonio right now is a perfect example of how it works and it's working. We have very quick deployment and response with all of the teams across sectors. He tells me this is what we do. We have all of the elements in place, the proper infrastructure and the necessary medical and military mechanisms that simply other places don't have. You should know that cities all over the world come to San Antonio to study us and to make sure that they are doing things the San Antonio way. Coronavirus is a crucial talking point because of what is happening right now, but there are other possible disasters we could see. The city works closely with FEMA and the federal government to make sure we are as prepared as possible. We spend millions of dollars and thousands of hours every single year beefing up and hardening all of our response uh, protocols and all the infrastructure in place and making sure that we've got the right team of people in place. Name your disaster, chances are we've thought of it. And since San Antonio is Military City USA, and we conduct important federal operations here, we have an increased level of importance when it comes to resources. We've been working with partners at both of those levels to make sure that you know San Antonio is high on their list of priorities to make sure that all, all of the resources we have here are protected. It's also key to mention one third of the city's budget is police and fire. Wrapped in there is also disaster preparedness. And on top of that, our budget funds Metro Health. And when it comes to emergency preparedness, the city councilman tells me we are in good shape. But when situations do arise, getting accurate information is a top priority. My advice to my neighbors is before you believe what you read on 
Facebook or some blog or a conspiracy theory, check in with Metro Health, check in with your firefighters and check in with your city council members. We'll tell you what's really going on. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 931 outside with live cam of oh, just hours away from the kickoff of the weekend. I know and it looks like it's going to be a beauty. It's going to be much nicer than the last couple of days. That's for sure. Uh, cold, cloudy day yesterday, damp as well, but we've got some good improvements taking place as we speak. And thank goodness yesterday's damp conditions didn't have too big of an effect on the mold count. It's still low today and that is good news. Juniper, ash and elm are also present in the pollen count, but are also low. Want to give you a look at today's almanac. Our morning low at the airport, 37 degrees, but it was this day in 1996 that we set a record high temperature of 100 degrees. I can't say I remember that, but goodness gracious. Thank goodness we're not going to be anywhere near that. In fact, we'll be almost like 50 degrees cooler than that this afternoon. It's going to be a mostly sunny but cool day today. Clouds roll back in by Sunday and then we've got our next front arriving by Monday. That's not going to cool us down a whole lot, but it will bring in some drier air. We do have a second front though that will take us back down into the 50s by next week. We'll talk all about that coming up in the full forecast, guys. Yeah, Katie. Uh, Austin Nixley said he was three when we hit 100 degrees yes. that date. Gee, thanks for all you that reminder. Four. You're not helping, but thank uh -huh. you, Kate Blake. At <laughs> 35 at Pine Street. Let's see here. Looks like we've got a stalled vehicle there in the shadow of one of the uh, overpass bridges right now. Maybe the hood is open. It's not affecting traffic, but be advised if you're headed in those lanes. Uh, that left shoulder is occupied. A three-day comedy festival, a Mardi Gras parade, and National Margarita Day. So much fun to be had this weekend. So we had a check-in with Erica Hernandez live in the KSAT 12 newsroom with more. Hi, Erica. Hey, guys. Good morning. Well, a huge Latinx comedy festival is taking place here in town starting today. It's called the Ha Festival, and it features 20-plus shows around San Antonio, including the Empire Theater, the Stable at the Pearl, and the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. The Ha Festival will culminate with the taping of a TV special at the Empire Theater that is hosted by comedian Angela Johnson. We have a link up right now for the festival website that has more information on all the events and how to get tickets. Next up tomorrow, the Mardi Gras Festival and Parade will be held at the Arneson River Theater. The River Parade is from 4 to 6 p.m. There will be live entertainment on the stage throughout the day. The public is encouraged to come dressed in masks, costumes, and beads, and admission is free. And finally, National Margarita Day is tomorrow. You may want to take part in the Margarita y Musica 5.5K at Market Square. La Familia Cortez is behind this event. They are calling it a fun not run, and that's because a short stroll will lead to five mini margaritas <laughs> from each La Familia Cortez family, and then a full-size beer rita at the finish line. Ticket prices are $25 for one runner or $40 for two. They can be purchased online. For more on all these events, just head to Things To Do page on our website. Mark Leslie, have a great weekend. Lots of good stuff out there to do. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Sounds like they're knocking down a wall or two in the newsroom right now. They are. They're, they're constructing something for sure. Yes, 935, 41 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. This weekend is your last chance to check out all things rodeo. After the break, we are going to check back in with David and Alicia and get another live look at a fun activity. Gone fishing. It's Wesley Astley at seven. Come on. A couple of generations involved. And we are an 80-point ride. Atkins is four years old. And she said, I don't know about this rodeo business. <laughs> oh, it's a little high five with the pink boots. So cute. Hey, two weeks ago, Alicia and David kicked off the stock show and rodeo for us. So it seems only fitting that we'd close it out for us as well. Yes, David and Alicia are at the rodeo fairground. They join us live. Looks like you two are doing a little fishing. We're hanging up that sign that says Gone Fishing. It's been a long two and a half weeks. At least he's been out here almost every day. This rodeo Texas Jordan Maldonado. Every single day. So we thought we would relax and do a little fishing. But before we go today, we wanted to kind of look back at some of the fun and excitement. Let me see if I can straighten it out. 
You that got is, it. How far is that? It's seven and a half feet. Seven, seven and, and a half feet. feet from tip to tip on these long arms, and I can barely. <laughs> Real quick, got to get up some, you know, cowboy speed. Going around the corner. Here we go. All right, I got that down. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Over the ramp. How do you like that, huh? What, what did you do? You're just riding a bike in a circle. All right. Well, we're gonna we're, we're about to uh, embark on a challenge of making some sculptures, and he's gonna allow me to work on my sculpting skills. See, there's the fangs, and there's the bottom lip of the rattlesnake, and there's the top. Uh, maybe you should leave that to the eyes. expert, David. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> well, you're jumping jump over him. Me. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't know. Oh. That, I don't know about that. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. How about that for oh. a trick? Okay, David. Um. Yeah. Nice job. A for effort, buddy. Got elected the special assistant to the. Just caught a fish. So, Man. Uh, you're gonna take that off the hook. You're gonna get somebody to help you. Help me get it. Okay, Miss Rodeo Texas can all do it right, all. Cowgirl, right here. Wait, maybe right you there. can't get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Go ahead. I'm a catfish. Good yes. job, you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a catfish. You gotta I help me there if you want. So, all right. So, so Jordan, two and a half weeks of the San Antonio Stock Two and Rodeo. What's this experience been like for you? It's been amazing. I can't believe that I got to spend two and a half weeks in my hometown rodeo and hang out with the coolest people and just have the best opportunities that I could yeah. possibly have. Yeah, you have to put that back in there. Go back in there. There you go. Good job. I'd clap for you. Thank you. Now you I'd smell like fish. That's good. Yeah. Now you know you've been fishing. <laughs> Alicia, your second year of covering the San Antonio yes. Stock Show and Rodeo. As fun as the first year. I think it's, it gets better every year. Jordan, I think you can agree, right? Like every year just gets better and better. It expands. There's so much more to do and see. Um, you know, this, the, the new thing this year was that music stage, uh, Shoot 7. So that was pretty cool. It's just a lot of variety. Something for everyone. So, yeah, it's been a blast. I think I, no, I almost got uh, one. Oh, <laughs> but it went down, right? Yeah. How many times can you oh, go fishing? Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 See how exciting fishing can be. Careful, so, careful. Great it's way dangerous to, to wrap up all the fun inside. I know. It's like, it's like, yeah. Aww, guys, when they say they hook them, they don't mean so. hook them. <laughs> all right. That's good stuff. Ah, so. I almost got one so. again. Oh, Lisa, I'm pulling for you, girl. Yeah. You're going well, fishing surviving. crazy. Hey, uh, guys, this is good can we take a quick break? We want to point out that David's here. He is a new grandpa. Yes, congratulations to David Sears, grandbaby number two. Congrats. This is his, uh, his daughter gave birth to Carrie McCree Garrett, born yesterday at 5, 19, 8 pounds, 15 ounces, 20 and a half inches long. Congratulations, Mr. Sears. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much. And what did I call you? Huh? Pops. Pops, that's right. Pops. 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 Okay. Pops. Well, one day you can take your grandbaby fishing. The fishing oh. skills. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Working on those skills right now because this will be them one day out here fishing. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been, Thank again, congratulations, much. David. And it's been right. a great run out there, Rodeo. Thank you Thank for everything you. you guys have done. Yeah. It's fun looking back at all that he's done. What's that? It's fun looking back at all oh, that he's done. Oh, it is. Yep. Thanks, guys. Hi, right, guys. Good luck out there. Uh, well, with a 100 foot drop and reaching about 55 miles per hour, new roller coaster at SeaWorld here in San Antonio will be the tallest, fastest, longest wooden coaster, we are told, in the state of Texas. Sounds scary. RJ Marquez, they are live getting a sneak peek at the Texas Stingray. So, did you ride it yet? Back and shoulders against the seat back. Hold on tight. Yeah, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, so we actually did get the opportunity to ride it. Myself and uh, KSAT producer Alex McLeod got the opportunity to get on this uh, on this wooden roller coaster, the Texas Stingray. Uh, you guys mentioned it is uh, 55 miles per hour as far as speed. It has a 100 foot drop and 16 airtime jumps. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, I wanted to uh, bring along Alex with me to kind of get his uh, reaction to this roller coaster. What were your thoughts? Alex. 
It's fast. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's surprising. They have a lot of uh, very sharp turns that you don't really um, <laughs> expect. They kind of sneak up on you, which is, uh, as a, a fan of roller coasters, I really appreciate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. there were a few times that uh, the hood of my jacket kind of uh, went over my head a little bit because, especially after that first drop, you really kind of feel the, uh, the speed of the roller coaster. And also, uh, being that it is a little bit chilly on right now, and I think now we're showing some video of Alex and myself being on the ride and you can kind of see us uh, going through the motions there and also uh, as Alex mentioned a lot of interesting turns a lot of interesting twists to this roller coaster again this thing opens up uh, February 29th here at SeaWorld San Antonio it's called the Texas Stingray yes we Leslie. noticed that Alex's hands are up and yours holding on for dear life white knuckle ride RJ <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny because Alex was uh, telling me uh, before we uh, rode the roller coaster, he asked me, uh, have you ever gone skydiving? And my answer to that was, uh, no, I have not. And Alex was like, well, you know what? It's a real thrill. So I knew Alex that uh, was definitely going to be a pro at this. They were telling me about you keeping your arms up the entire time. Oh, yeah, man. You got to you got to do it. You got to especially during that first drop. You got you got to. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I did notice that and I figured that uh, maybe you guys might uh, bring up that point. Well, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. Welcome and back. it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you pick a good roller coaster yeah. travel partner there, RJ. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Of course, a lot of people are now getting the opportunity to ride the uh, Texas Stingray. Again, it opens at the end of this month here at SeaWorld San Antonio, and uh, and we've been saying it a few times already. It is the uh, the fastest uh, wooden roller coaster here now in the state of Texas. So pretty cool stuff going on here at SeaWorld San Antonio. Awesome. Mark and Leslie? Thank you very much. Thank you for the preview, RJ. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Alex, for your... Thanks, guys. For your... For your participation, roller coaster participation. He gets a <laughs> he gets a medal later. It. it is a little cold up there, but yeah. they're lucky it's not all rainy like it was the last that two days. That is true. That is true. That would have stunk. <laughs> no, kidding. no kidding. Yeah, so nice to see the sunshine this morning. We're going to warm up just into the 50s this afternoon, though, so it's a little deceiving. You may think it, it's going to be really warm out this afternoon because we've got the sun back. Still going to be on the cool side, but we'll see a little warming trend as we head into the weekend. 62 tomorrow, 66 with higher humidity by Sunday. We've got two fronts in the planning forecast here. You'll notice the first one, though, temperatures actually go up Sunday into Monday afternoon when that front comes through. The second front, though, that will be the one that cools us down once again. And here's a look at how those two fronts play out next week. The first will be what we call a Pacific or a uh, dry front coming in from the West Coast. This is just going to bring in some drier air for us, drop our humidity once again after it kind of picks back up a little bit on Sunday. It's that second front that will pull in some cooler, even colder air from the far northern portion of the country. That's what will take us back into the 50s by the middle of next week. So we're 41 degrees right now. We'll be at 48 by lunchtime. 55 your high temperature today. Winds becoming light just 5 to 10 miles per hour later this afternoon. It's still a touch on the breezy side right now, but by this afternoon and especially into the evening, winds will be light, so not quite as chilly, but after we get past sunset, temperatures will begin to drop into the 40s pretty quickly, so if you're heading out to the rodeo this evening, have any other Friday evening plans, make sure you have a jacket or a sweater. So in the 30s up in the hill country, 36 in Rock Springs, it's 48 in Beeville, 44 in Gonzales. And here's a look at those winds that are still a touch on the breezy side, especially along and east of I-35. That's where we have sustained winds still between about 10 and 15 miles per hour. West of 35 winds are starting to relax, and that's the trend that we'll continue to see into the afternoon. By lunchtime, still a little bit of a breeze down on the coastal bend. Here in town, winds are just about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then as we head into the late afternoon, early evening hours, sustained wind speeds will actually be closer to 2 to 5 miles per hour overnight tonight. Leslie was talking about it last half hour. Can't wait to get that car washed. I am with you, and the next couple of days do look good for that. On Sunday, I put in a 10% chance of a little bit of mist, maybe a stray shower, uh, because we will see humidity build back in. Some morning fog and mist will be possible on Sunday. And then a chance of a really isolated shower as we head into Sunday night on Monday as that first front comes through. Just a 20% chance of an isolated shower early on Monday. But otherwise looking good for a car wash the next couple of days. Enjoy the weekend, uh, especially Saturday. That'll be the better day for any outdoor activities. Here's Sunday. Humidity builds back in. That leads to some of that patchy morning fog and mist. 20% chance of a shower as front number one comes through Monday morning. We'll see humidity drop. 
temperatures back into the 70s Monday afternoon. Front number two, that's what drops us back into the 50s by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Also some colder mornings coming up. We'll see our low temperatures back into the 30s behind that second front next week. So I've had some folks start to ask, hey, you have any more freezes around? Well, some spots up in the hill country did see a freeze this morning, a light freeze, and it's not out of the realm of possibility that we'll have another light freeze middle and back half of next week. So I don't think we're quite there just yet. That's all right. Downhill side. At least we have sunshine. Yes, definitely. Thanks. Uh-huh. Right now it's 950. We're at 41 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. call this a street that never sleeps. San Pedro Avenue seems to be wide awake all night long. There's always like some type of commotion that's happening in this, in this area for the most part. This club goer sums up the 24-7 lifestyle on this stretch of street. It seems there's never a dull moment on San Pedro between Interstate 35 and Cypress. And a lot of what happens here gets the attention of San Antonio police. In the latest while you were sleeping, I open your eyes to what happens out here while your eyes are closed. You can check it out on our website, ksat.com. Once again, we're keeping an eye on the stock market for you. They're sharply down 261 points at 28,951. If you're headed out and about to run some errands this morning, we have a slowdown here. Looks like construction 410 at New Braunfels Avenue, but bright sunshine out there. Looks like it's going to be a great day. Really nice. We have pick up a few high thin clouds this afternoon and then again tomorrow, but definitely an improvement from the last couple of days. Cool this afternoon. Highs in the mid 50s. We'll start off cold tomorrow morning. 37 on area Saturday morning. 62 in the afternoon. We'll continue to warm up a little bit Sunday, but we bring back the clouds, higher humidity, and then a front rolls in early Monday. That could give us an isolated stray shower, but rain chances not very high for the next week or so. We'll see another cool down by the middle of next week behind cold front number two. Valentine's Day is over, but people are still looking for love, and one guy's willing to pay for it. <laughs> $25,000 if you'll help him <laughs> find a girlfriend. Uh, he's up in Prairie Village, Kansas. He's an entrepreneur, and he is offering twenty-five dollars to the real-life Cupid who can help him land Mrs. Wright. He said, I'm single. I don't want to go back to the normal app-based dating stuff. Stuff. So he um, has an outsized personal ad that promises an additional 25000 to a local no-kill animal shelter because he loves his dog. His name is Jeff Gephardt, by the way. Yes, and his 47. website, in case you're really interested and you want to go up to Kansas for a date, it's datejeffg.com. I just want, if you want to know a little about him, in case you want to date him, he's uh, 5 feet 7 inches tall, 160 pounds, 9% Body mass index. Is that something yeah. you list? Apparently you list your BMI? He's run with the bulls in Spain, jumped out of airplanes, and snowboards wearing pink bunny costumes. Uh, Gephardt claims about 30 of his buds, plus a clinical psychologist, developed a personality matching analysis, which assures prospective sweethearts is really scientific to help him find Here's a gal pal. The fine print. Um, Here's the fine print for you. It can only cash in a year of exclusive after he's dated for a year. That's when you can cash in. Oh, well. You only get $5,000 a year for five years. Oh, well. And if you date him, you're not quite eligible for the money. Date Lots Jeff G. It's only the matchmaker. Datejeffg.com or, or Bumble in Prairie Village, Kansas.